Hello everybody and welcome to VFR today. We are going to be taking a quick flight in my T6, almost perfect, and we're going to talk a little bit about where we've been as a channel, where we've been in the sim, and where we're going in 2022. So come along with us, we're going to be flying along the Gulf Coast of Florida. We are here in Pensacola, Florida, one of the hubs of naval aviation training at a place that the T6 Texan would be very familiar with. Alright, so we've departed Pensacola International Airport, and we're now heading south out for the Gulf. Uh, Pensacola Beach, right in front of us, that's home to um, one of the biggest air shows in the Blue Angels demonstrations. Blue Angels, of course, are based here in Pensacola when they're not traveling all over the place. And yeah, it's one of the best places to see the Blue Angels, if you want to. Um, Pensacola Naval Air Station is off to our right. That's going to be a place where a lot of flight training happens for naval aviators. So our plan for today, we're going to fly out over the water. We're going to fly up the beach towards Destin and Panama City. And then we'll come back to land at Pensacola International Airport. Now, on the way, I really just want to take a little bit of time, fly a fun plane, and talk about where we've been as a, a channel and as a sim for 2021. Um, it's been a long and really exciting year, I think, for um, flight simulation in general. And Microsoft Flight Simulator, I, I think we've come a long way in the year that we've had. I mean, obviously, there are the world updates and the sim updates, which did bring some pretty noticeable performance increases. And uh, we have a lot more settings to tweak now, and you can play with them without having to go edit files. So that's always nice. I mean, we also got the float planes and skis which was a pretty big addition to a lot of the a lot of different airplanes. I was actually surprised and pleased how many airplanes got uh, different configurations and um, those configurations are cool to see. We also got a lot of new airplanes, uh, really fun airplanes like the PMD GDC-6, which really birthed this channel. Um, Just Flight Arrows and Piper Warrior are really fun too. I've been flying those a lot recently. Uh, the CRJ-900 and 1000 came out. I haven't flown those particularly, but they look really good. And it's, um, yeah, the, there's a bunch of other ones like the G, the Yonkers J-52 was a really fun airplane to fly. It's really pretty unique and, um, yeah, it just handled really, really uniquely. So that was a fun plane to fly. Uh, the GBR-3 from Got Friends, another really good one. I haven't gotten a chance to fly it on the channel, but it is a really good, fun airplane to fly. Personally, for me, this is a big year for learning about airliners and how all that works, how that specifically works. Personally, for me, this year was a big year of growth for my airliners. I had never really flown airliners. I didn't know what SIDS and STARS were, and I wasn't really too interested in it. I had dabbled with the A320, um, but really, I didn't get serious about flying that uh, until I looked into starting VATSIM. VATSIM was always one of those things that I wasn't ever sure about. Uh, it was always annoyed me in DCS when people would get on tower control and I just didn't want to talk to tower. Because, I, you know, you didn't know the phraseology, it's a good way to embarrass yourself. But once it buckled down and actually learned more about how it all worked and VATSIM and got interested in, you know, learn how to do the actual air traffic control in BATSIM. It's been hugely rewarding. I think that's one of the biggest things that I've been pleased about this year was starting BATSIM and learning more about 
how to fly those kinds of planes and those kinds of routes. There's a lot of detail involved in it. I'm not particularly well versed in it, but it's a lot of fun and there's a lot of a lot of things to 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 learn still. That's one of the reasons I'm really excited for uh, 737s too. The other big thing was the DC-6. I think this year DC-6 made me be a I think ahead more. Whereas when I generally sim flying, you maybe take you might make a flight plan, um, but you know before I started flying the DC-6, that would really an occasional thing. Now after flying the DC-6 and learning that, I really do spend a lot more time flight planning in all my airplanes before before doing that, thinking through and just the realization of hey being able to say this is where I should be at this point in the flight you should be able to plan that out this shouldn't be that unpredictable and so that was a real point that opened my eyes in the DC-6 is learning how to flight plan and come up with those flight plans and being able to hit those different marks it's been a really cool thing for me Now, obviously, we flew a lot of airplanes this year, and it's only natural to start thinking about favorites. And really, the one plane that I flew, it didn't come out this year, but was the CRJ-700 from Aerosoft. I picked that up this earlier this year in the early spring, late winter. And that was a really good call for me. It's been probably the one plane that I've come back to the most just saying, hey, I can go do a CRJ flight. And I found a good checklist, and that's been a really fun plane to fly. I think it's been my most reliable plane to sit down and say, hey, we're gonna go do X, Y, or Z flight and just learn a little bit more about that airplane. It's not overly complicated. It's a little bit manual, but it is a lot of fun. Obviously, the other one to mention is the DC-6, probably the second most time I've spent in. I probably spent the most time in the CRJ and the second most time in the DC-6. And the DC-6, again, it's a whole other beast. It's a completely different flight experience. Plus, learning to make videos with it was, a, you know, its own learning curve in itself. So you've got kind of two parallel learning curves going on with the DC-6. But it is a really, really fun, deep airplane. I haven't even scratched the surface on that one. Uh, but it is fun to fly. And once you, I think it's more fun to fly off camera. Because on camera, there's a lot that can go wrong. When I just sit down, and I think we should do more world tours and maybe live stream and stuff like that. Once you sit down and just relax and fly the plane and can kind of focus on that, it is a lot of fun. And really, I think that brings me to VFR. The channel obviously started in 2021, so now looking back at 2021 and Flight Sim, I think is complete without talking about the channel that we've started here. It's been a really interesting journey. I think it's been a lot of fun. I've learned quite a bit. Um, YouTube has changed a lot over the years, uh, but it has been a really interesting, really fun way. And I think it, um, I don't know, it just, it helps me. It's one of the things I do to fly. Too. It gives me one. Of, it's one of the things that gives me the reasons to fly. I'll do VFR missions. There'll be special VFR flights. So I appreciate that, and I enjoy sharing uh, my thoughts for whatever little they're worth with everybody too uh, in the community. Uh, it's a really fun time to be a flight simmer, I think, and it's a really interesting hobby. And um, yeah, there's a ton of tools and a ton of options for really whatever you you want to do and can find joy in doing. That's still, you know, basically the philosophy of this channel. The whole point is I always come back to why is it fun? Why do you want to do this? It's kind of obvious, I guess, for our main series, why you should fly. But the, the content that I really love in flight simming, the people, the videos I really enjoy watching, the people I really respect, they're the ones who can make me does, want to dust off an old airplane. The new and shiny is fun and really cool, and I think we do obviously want to cover that but really i think the mark of great content is making you want to do different things with the airplanes in your hangar making you dust them off making you excited to learn more about them and fly them that's the stuff that i really love to see and that's the kind of thing that i want to keep creating more of and finding different ways to create more of that and uh just yeah expanding that reach 
why is it fun is kind of the ultimate question of VFR. Why is the sim cool and fun, and you know why are why is this such a, a unique and uh, unique and interesting hobby? And again, I think it's in a really good place. I think we've got a lot of really exciting things happening in flight simulation. And uh, yeah, I hope the channel is really no different. We've got a few goals for 2022. We've got a bunch of why you should flies that we can knock out and um, explore. We're really in a more exploratory state with why you should fly. I've really covered most of the airplanes that I fly with any great regularity. So now it's kind of exciting. I can sit down for a couple of weeks with an airplane and come up with uh, come up with why you should fly. Explore why you should fly it. Because no one really makes an airplane that they wouldn't want to fly when they're developing. Obviously we want to have new series, uh, coming up with new ideas for um, different things that we can explore in this channel. And then really looking at other, maybe putting on some events, trying to gain more community involvement, trying to put together some ideas or resources for helping other people host events. Could be a really cool thing for, um, for VFR in the near future. The final thing, looking for some way to provide more value to the community and um, maybe even open up a membership program of some kind. Haven't decided how that'll look or how that will work, uh, but there's, I think there's definitely something that we can add to people's experiences. And um, yeah, I think there's a lot of really exciting ideas floating around. So as we fly along the intercoastal, I want to close with a brief pitch as to why you should think about flying Microsoft Flight Simulator in 2022. Obviously, it has its bugs and its problems, but I think if you look around, it is very much one of the premier simulation sim platforms on the market. And I think it's a really exciting time for Microsoft Flight Simulator. We've got a maturing ecosystem. I think we've got demonstrated commitment to the platform by multiple partners. I mean, having DC, PMDG with one airplane in, in the door is great. And when we get the 737, that'll help too. There aren't as many maybe full IFR airliners, but uh, I do think that it has something to offer everybody, a little bit of something to offer everybody. Uh, the A32NX is, makes great progress as always. It's a lot of fun. And the improvements keep coming too. I mean, they're not without bugs, they're not without issues. But the uh, the continued support is really, um, really interesting. Some games don't get supported past two years. Uh, and that's, I think, something that's really promising about Microsoft Flight Simulator. Obviously, helicopters will be a big deal. Um, there are some other uh, things like gliders, which could be fun. and. Um, just, yeah, the, the continuing maturing of the ecosystem, lots of people buying in, um, lots of community creators. The freeware community of Microsoft Flight Simulator is very good as well. There's lots of great freeware um, aircraft. There's lots of great freeware airports that I'm trying to showcase a little bit on the channel. And that's also really, really promising and really exciting to see, just to see all, all the different options you have. You've got, you can really fill out a really compelling Microsoft Flight Simulator experience without any kind of payware. And um, yeah, it's, I think that's a really, really exciting thing. All right, so we're flying back to the west towards Pensacola. We are going to basically make straight in for the runway and um, we'll try and land somewhere around the center line. back at Pensacola International Airport. We're going to loop around and come in here onto what I think is one right two seven. Again, I can't thank everyone who has supported the channel enough this past year. It's been a lot of fun and it's, it's yeah, it's just been a lot of fun to share uh, my hobby with, with the YouTubes. So appreciate y'all coming along. And uh, yeah, if you have any comments, ideas for other um, 
shows, other airplanes we should fly, any airplanes to look at, drop in the comments section below. Tell us what your favorite airplane has been of 2021. What's something that you have learned how to do? All good questions for the comments section below. And again, if you haven't already, like, comment, subscribe, all the usual YouTube stuff. It goes a long way to helping the algorithm figure out what people should be watching. It really has been a lot of fun, and again, the Microsoft Flight Simulator, I think, is in a pretty good place, and I think we have a lot to look forward to moving forward. Um, and just even, I didn't even talk about Reno. So yeah, a lot of these planes, too. All right, and we're turning onto the runway now. Had a brief hiccup with the engine, which was odd, but oh well. You're coming into lane, I'll just bump myself up so I can see. Um, again, it's been a really great pleasure bringing you all videos, and uh, yeah, really appreciate all the support. Looking forward to 2022. As always, this has been VFR. Take it easy, y'all.